But everything, uh, as we went along, it got more and more difficult. In 1942, things changed in Paris uh, very much. That's where you, you could be arrested in the street for no reason. You have to show the paper. So the police station made every Jew come and register the name, and you bring your card in on TV, and on the card they stamp Jew. So that means now, if you're arrested, the card say Jew. I don't know what happened. I took my car to police station, but I didn't get the Jew scam. But I got the Jew emblem that I wear, a yellow star, Jewish uh, star of David in yellow. And this we had to start wearing now that in, we are in the middle of 42. And this is very, very bad because when you wear it in the street now, you, anybody knows the Jew. One day, me with my fiancé went to the subway. We were traveling, and one Frenchman ad, uh, accosted us and shake her head and say, you won't wear it for a long time. Don't worry about it. That made us feel good, but we were afraid to say. We didn't know if this man meant it. Could have been the police? We don't know. You know, you, you, you were very suspicious of everybody. That was, was in one incident, and then there was another one. We were sitting in a cafe in Paris. I think uh, not far from my house I used to live, and in come two policemen dressed up in uh, civil clothes, you know, private detective, asked papers. He asked my, uh, my fiancé's card in TV, and he had no Jew on it. He, his name is Jacob Joseph Beanstalk, and that name gave you away. And right away, say, he said to Jack, where is your Jew stamp? I said, no, I don't have it. He said, tomorrow you're coming to police station, and uh, we put you the stamp Jew on it. This way, you know, you, you get the Jew stamp. Meantime, we, we, we had to wear the Jew star. So my husband, I think he was afraid to wear. Me, I wore it. And now, now we got problem. Because now you really could get arrested. And now we were not able to, to stay much longer in Paris. Now we have to try to leave. What we do, how to leave Paris, that's the most important thing that came to us because we know we cannot stay no more. This is the end of the line. We stay as long as we could and if we don't leave now, we know we n maybe not able to leave anymore. So to Jack, who had a very good friend that uh, in the building they live, he had helped them. So this gentleman was able to do us a favor and he promised he would take me to the border of Vierzon, that's the demarcation zone between zone libre and zone occupied. And he has a connection with a, uh, uh, a man from the railroad, a railroad man, you know? And we made a date, and he will pick me up, and we take the train from Paris to go to Vierzon. That day I came to say goodbye. I mean, I, I live home, so I took an umbrella with me, a little suitcase, wore double clothes because I never know why. And my father gave me some gold coin. He said, if something happened, maybe it would, it would help you to buy your way out, you know? That was in, in a little money. The gold coin I saw on my clothes because, you know, if you carry things that may take away, at least if you know where they're hidden, maybe you have a chance. The first time I saw him crying, we both cry because he said, when I say, maybe we will never see each other again. And I was only 1942, I was 18 years old. I was 18, 19 years old. I'm all by myself now. This gentleman will take me. So we take the train in Paris. Of course, you, we scare wherever you go because you never know who's going to come at your name, you know? You really scare. Wherever, wherever you go, you scare. You don't know. You never know what about to happen tomorrow. We're in the train station and we're arriving to Viazon. We should get off the train. Now, the man who's supposed to take us over, the railroad man, couldn't do it that day. It was too dangerous. See, a certain day he cannot do it. So we had to spend the night in Viazon. So we had to look for a hotel. So he looked for one room and I looked for, I had one room. And the morning, we cannot go either because it's this, it can only do mostly nighttime. So we have to spend the day in Viazon, the city. We walk, I don't know where. Till nighttime came down, then he, he, the railroad man came and made a signal that I should follow him and stay in a little cafe and the railroad station. 
my little umbrella, with my little suitcase. He told me to sit there and he would come for me. I was by my own now, with the other one left to go back to Paris, you see. He, he, he was not Jewish, so he, had not that, he was not that scared. And I was shivering, trembling, because the Germans are at that station. You know, the German are there, they, they supervised by the German and the, and the French, whatever. So finally, after waiting and waiting, he comes in and he doesn't take me. He makes me single to follow him. He goes in front and I go in back of him. We go over the tracks, many, many tracks, many, many tracks, till we see wagon. It's a wagon, you know, a coal wagon, I see from far away. And he made me signal to go in and he left. He, he, I never touched him, you know, he only signaled me where to go and he left me. It was an open wagon, it used to be coal inside. So I went in the corner and I, I never forget that. I go in the corner and I sit like this and I difficulty breathing, I hold my breath, everything. Then after a short time I hear a woman screaming, the German, the German, she was in a caboose. She was with, one man took her along, like a man, like a pastor they call him friend. A man who took her, but he stayed with her to go over the border. I was alone. And she saw the German, because the German walked around the tracks, and she started screaming. She was hysterical. I said, oh my God, please stop. They're going to share the, look at the wagon, they're going to find me. I couldn't wait anymore. I couldn't wait. I was sitting there, just shivering cold, dirty, because it's cold. Anyway. God helped me after a while, the train started moving. I never forget that moment. I stand up from that corner, and I never forgot what I say. I say, oh, loud. I could breathe again. I never forgot this word. In, Francais, in French, I say, je peux respirer maintenant. That means I couldn't breathe. I started to stand up. Now I can breathe. I was like a relief in my body. I was happy that I was able to make it. Of course, I, I was still worried. My parents, my sisters behind, and I, and, uh, I was really worried. I, I couldn't be at my ease yet, but I felt that I made it. Thank God I made it. So I came to the other side of France, and I had to get off of that wagon. Now I had to go buy a ticket to go in, <laughs> in the train to go close where my boyfriend, or fiancé at that time, he was a fiancé, was staying. He was staying on a farm in uh, Cerro. Uh, the section was uh, Creuse, that was the region. Creuse. He was staying on a farm that he used to go when he was a little boy, as a vacation time. And I had the address, 